performance repair, we're going to use a safe open pry tool, a small Phillips screwdriver, and adhesive strips. There's also other tools we can use, including suction cups and ESD nylon spudgers. So to perform the repair, the first thing you want to do is make sure the device is fully powered off. Then we're going to take a heat gun or a hair dryer, begin warming the outside edges of the back cover here. You want to make sure to use quick movements around the outside edges. Use a medium heat. This will soften that adhesive, holding the back cover to the device itself. So we're going to use a suction cup here. It's not necessary, however it allowed for easier entry. We're going to start in a corner here and pull out. It's going to allow us to get underneath that back cover using a safe open pry tool. So it's going to start on the top here and just run our pry tool along the outside edge and just release that adhesive. You want to make sure not to shove the pry tool too deep inside as you don't want to cause any damage to the internals of the device. As you can see with proper heat, the adhesive comes off quite nicely. We're just going to apply a little bit of pressure on the outside here and allow our pry tool to slide right in and just continue releasing all that adhesive along the outside edges. If the adhesive becomes difficult to release, we suggest using a little bit more heat. However, you don't want to apply too much as the battery still is inside. And there we go. As you can see, that adhesive just peeled right back. And the back cover has now been removed. So now that we have full access to the internals, the first thing we want to do is release the battery connection right here and remove the battery itself. So it's going to release that flex cable. Now the battery is held in place with very strong adhesive and it's also got two flex cables located underneath it so you want to be very careful where you pry to release that adhesive. Located in yellow on diagram to the left is going to be two flex cables and the blue will be adhesive. So we're going to swap to our nylon spudger here just to give us a little bit more leverage and just begin releasing all that adhesive located on the right side. Once that adhesive is released, we're going to start in the center here. We can pry underneath and just release that adhesive in the H shape. And there we go. That adhesive is very, very strong, so take your time when doing this. You want to make sure not to bend the battery in any sort of way or damage it. Now that we have the battery fully removed, we just have a few flex cables to release, four on top here, as well as a little plastic spacer located down here. Just going to release that spacer and using the pointy end of our spudger we're just going to release this connection down here for the vibrate motor. The simple pop connection. Just want to be very careful with that connection as it is very small. And now we're going to release the main LCD and touchscreen flex right here. The side button flex there and some of the small components located up here as well as the antenna on the motherboard itself. Using our small Phillips screwdriver we just have four small Phillips screws to remove. Alright, now we're going to swap over to our safe open pry tool and release this small piece of housing located up in the top corner here. Easy way of doing this is just release this cover right there and allow that to pop right out. Removing that exposes a few more connections including the main camera connector right here which is located underneath the copper tape. I'm just going to release that tape and release the pop connector and there's your main camera. On the other side over here we have the front camera another simple pop connector And one more important thing to remove is going to be the SIM card over here. Just going to remove this cover. And we're going to use tweezers here to remove the SIM card tray. Once all those have been released and everything has been removed, we can now remove the motherboard itself. You just want to be very careful with any loose connections, 
including up on the tops here where we have the headphone jack and this bottom connection for the side flux cable. As you can tell right there, it's getting caught on that headphone jack flux cable, so you should be very careful of that. And there we go, the motherboard has now been removed. Using a small flathead screwdriver, we're just going to remove the ear speaker. This is not necessary, however, if you're replacing the ear speaker, it's simple enough. All I have to do is get underneath the adhesive, and there is your ear speaker. The final component on the top here is just going to be the headphone jack and sensor flex cable. We're just going to use your safe open pry tool and gently lift that up and out. And just going to put that to the side. At the bottom of the device here, we have another plastic cover that we'll need to release. Just use your safe open pry tool and just release some of those clips holding that back housing in place. You want to be very careful though, as it's going to be still attached by the antenna flex cable. Best way to release this is just release the full circuit board down here for the antenna. So to do that, we're just going to use your safe open pry tool again and release it from those clips in the housing. And there we go. This also has your loudspeaker in it right here. On the right there. And your vibrate motor. The lower flex cable here is all for the LCD and touchscreen assembly. These connections do not necessarily need to be released. However, it can make it a little bit easier when releasing the full assembly from the front housing. But if you are replacing the full screen assembly, this is not a necessary step. I'm just going to release this final circuit board here for your antenna. And the final step will be removing this side button flex cable with mic. So there's the mic in the very bottom center there. I'm just going to get underneath this main adhesive spot right here. I'm going to be very careful as this flex cable is very fragile. I'm just going to release all the rest of the adhesive along the main stem of it. Once that's done, we can just flip it over and release this metal bracket here, holding the button housing in place. So it's going to get underneath it, lift it up, and from here, all we need to do is just release that adhesive for the buttons. Just carefully work your way around. It's a very thin flex cable, so we highly suggest removing it before you heat the front screen assembly. And there we go. There's your side button flex cable, now removed. And we are on to the final step of removing the screen itself from the front housing. So to do that, we're going to use a heat gun or hair dryer again. We're going to use a medium setting and just heat the outside edges of the screen assembly itself. This process can take some time as this adhesive holding the screen in is very, very strong. So we suggest heating up the screen assembly for about 45 seconds to a minute. Removing the screen assembly itself from the housing is a very difficult process. You want to be careful of any small grommets that might fall out, including that ca front camera grommet there. We're just going to pry in through the speaker hole here and the camera hole. Let's give ourselves a little bit of leverage. The adhesive holding the screen in is incredibly strong, so more than likely the glass will break. So we're just going to swap over to our spudger. This hopefully gets more leverage underneath the screen. Once you can get a starting position, right here we decide to crack the screen and apply a little bit more heat. And 
and we're just going to get underneath the adhesive begin working our way around and just releasing the touch screen and the LCD combination screen right here as you can tell even with proper heat the adhesive just holds that screen together so tightly that you're going to need to use something a little bit more sturdy than just an average pry tool I'm going to continue heating the screen making sure that adhesive is nice and soft and just begin sliding along. The sides are going to be much easier to release than the top and the bottom as there's going to be a lot less adhesive there. And just remove the other side of the adhesive and from there we're just going to heat that bottom side. We can just flip the screen assembly down, releasing that adhesive just using the leverage of the device itself. And use a pry tool, just release on that corner adhesive. And there we go. Now, all these flex cables are going to be connected, however, they all need to be removed together. As you can see right here, I was just able to remove the screen itself and then flip it along and remove the flex cable. And there we have it. The screen assembly on the Xperia Z has now been removed. Go on, make sure to just clean up any loose shards of glass, including up here, and just release that adhesive. That way you have a nice clean slate to work on when you replace the screen. All the tools and parts used in this video can be found at repairsuniverse.com. If you found this video useful, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. And also be sure to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching.